I had every intention to go through with the wedding. And the you first know, one? Yes. And that got postponed. That yeah, got she, canceled. She told me that she would change. She told me she knows that that she's all controlling and that she knows and she be all loud. And you, that, and see you, what I mean? See what yeah, I mean? Yes, all in, that, but that you she would change too. and she never changed. I tried to. I ain't gonna to, say I change. You don't know if I change now. If I live in Indiana, you, you don't know what you're talking about. Jackson, if you all could have worked this out, hollering and screaming at each other wouldn't be necessary to be honest. And I tried not to. I tried not to work it out be quiet until I recognize you. OK. Now, one more time. I tried to work it out with her, and I'm not trying no more. All right, so now we're down to the second wedding. So the second wedding is planned for when, Ms. Johnson? For September the 16th. I called him. I was like, you know, um, James, I'm going to Cedar Point. You want to go? He was like, yeah, fine. Come pick me up. I went and picked him up. We go to Cedar Point. After we come back from the park, we at the hotel. He was like, you know, Cindy, I do love you, and we are going to work this out. As soon as we get back to Indiana, we're going right down there. We're going to file for our marriage license. We're just going to get married at the Jets of the Peace. I'm like, fine. No, that's we what she wants. Down, no, she we wants to try to pressure to me to get the, married um, to her. She, I'm not she on my last we name because her credit bad. My credit ain't got nothing to do with it. He is like, we so goes that's what down. She you are both so out of control. I get, when I get married, I'm going the best to get thing a new truck under done. your name. No, you ain't. The best thing that either of you all could have done is not be together. Let me ask you all a question. How long have you all been together before we planned this first wedding? Before this uh, first wedding was Well, planned? we've been knowing each other for 10 years. So you had a baby together mm -hmm. and died. And our baby died. And mm -hmm. your house burned down? Correct. So you all have been dating for 10 years? No, we, we've been knowing each other for 10 years. We've been dating like a little over a year. So you knew each other for 10 years? Mm -hmm. Yes. And how long ago did you lose the baby? Did September the baby the 14th of last year, of 1999. And when did you have the house fire? It was in December 7th. So um, you all have really been through a lot. Right, and he always said that he was gonna get counseling for us to work it out. And he always I, talked I, about, I'm controlling, I I but I'm not I controlling. I he was always cheating on me and lying. Yeah, that's what and she that's assumed. the reason why I was she doing assumed. the things I was doing. I she wasn't assumed. even doing nothing but yelling her, with him. Ask her, but did, you, she, you did she ever catch me cheating on her? She assumed. We was calling my phone, cussing me all. He don't want you, he want me. Enough, this added enough, fact, enough. This added the fact that I left her. Enough, That's what enough. It, Mr. Jones, I said enough. I'm going to tell you. Now, the claim for the $3,100, the wedding dress, all the arrangements is on you. And that's tr that is really a sad, hard thing. But legally, I can't, I cannot grant you judgment on this $3,000 claim for a wedding dress. The wedding was on in April. You all had problems. You and your own testimony today said, I continued to incur these expenses because I believed in my heart. Because he kept telling me. He kept he telling was me going to marry that we're me. still getting married. So that's why I continue I understand on that. to buy it. And I understand that. But legally, I cannot hold him responsible for this because you decided that you were going to do this. And that's the hard call reality. But more importantly than this $3,000, I'm going to tell you honestly, Ms. Johnson, is your welfare. Because, you know, at the end of the day, the wedding dress and the flowers and all the things that you spent for this wedding will not mean anything if you don't have peace of mind. Now, I'm going to tell you, as hard as it is for you to hear this today, that you need to cut your relationship with Mr. Jones completely loose. Because a man who will back and forth, back and forth, through all the tough times of you all losing a child, of you losing things in a house fire, of a wedding that's on and off and on again, and you aren't clear as late as Tuesday, a few days ago, about what the status of this relationship is, you need to cut him loose. You need to reach way down deep in your soul. You're going to have to ask for some healing to happen in your life, but you need to let it go. And that's the best thing that you can do because this wedding, I don't think is going to ever, ever happen because you all aren't doing anything but screaming and hollering at each other. And I think the best thing that you all could have done is make the decision not to get married. Judgment is, uh, I cannot enter judgment in your favor. I am going to dismiss the claim given the fact that you incurred these wedding expenses legally. I cannot charge them against Mr. Jones. Now, Mr. Jones, in your own heart, you have got to figure out what your responsibilities are, if any, to Ms. Johnson, and I hope that you will do the decent thing. But I think you all need to either get into some serious counseling 
or you need to sever the ties completely as of now. Nothing further will stand adjourned.